All right, guys, well, look what we found here. Our next project. Uh, this may be a familiar one from uh, several videos back. I repaired the end of the dipper stick. But as you can see, something else broke. And then not a good day. So let's get out there and take a look at it. Let's go. Oh man. It's a good size baby right there. This is a Cat 365. 365B. Older unit. If you look back at one of my videos, it's more of a photo collage. I rebuilt this thing right here. That was uh, quite the mess. It's good to see that it's still holding up. Now, believe it or not, I also have a video of repairing that that cylinder. I don't have video. I have pictures. I'll show you. I'll probably put them in here. Uh, put them in, you know, video clips here. But the uh, customer was telling me that I guess the pin was working its way out and they didn't catch it i don't know how it they didn't catch that or the dog bone came off i don't know but that it came out and it snapped and so i gotta weld that onto that on site so this is something that interests you <laughs> kick back because this is going to be a good one all right we'll see you guys let's get after it all right so what how do we repair this hmm how do we repair this <laughs> uh one of you guys uh on youtube here said why not to why not ask my son to see what his thoughts are and i've done that before asked his thoughts on how you know he would go about repairing this and you know it's a good learning experience so what do you have to say how do we fix that well, we should clean up you know, where it's broken off, make sure it's all nice and flat and where it can weld it back together. Okay. Line, line everything up nicely, make sure. But how? I mean, you're just saying, you're saying all the obvious. Yeah. <laughs> so how do we do that? The machine still runs, we can still move it. Right. So, move the machine where we need to. The bucket is going to be interesting to move, but it can be done. Okay. Tech what in place? Or how do we do that? What do we what do we need to do? You're saying you're saying all the right things because they're just regular, regular standard things. operating procedures. Correct. But this, you know, because all tack it up in place, get it to where you move it. So what are we gonna do specifically? To get it in place? To get it in place, right. Well we can't tilt the bucket, so we right. can sit it down on the ground and then move the machine and then the bucket will tilt because uh, the pivot point is no longer this, but it's the ground. Okay. And then this is just hanging. So once we tilt it to where it lines up by backing up or pulling forward, whatever it is. Okay. We can lower the cylinder and get it to touch where it needs to and have that all cleaned up afterward. You're saying get it to touch from here to there? Yeah. Okay. Just back up the machine. should line it up a little bit better. Okay. Lower the cylinder, have it cleaned up, tack it in place, know where it's gonna sit, then we can, then we can start How are we gonna it. weld it though? What, what do we need to do to weld it? Maybe bevel it. Right. Okay. Bevel it, get it all nice. Uh, probably stick weld. Maybe. Okay. Pretty windy. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like you got it all planned out. I'll take a nap. <laughs> you can get it done. <laughs> I get to going. You get to going. You're burning daylight. <laughs> As we speak. As we speak. So get after it. No, that's pretty good. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so he's pretty pretty much right on. We're gonna move this machine to where this will angle right on top of it and sit down in its position. And being that it's a cast steel type material it broke fairly clean so it could almost sit right back on where it belonged and with that 
I will actually weld around the perimeter of it to hold it in place as we move this bucket just a little bit to get it at a lower position. And once it's welded around the perimeter, that's just to hold it. We will get it a little, lot lower. And from there, we will start gouging into that crack. And that weld, the opposite side of the weld where I'm gouging, will help hold it from rolling and pivoting. Now you would think this is actually too far gone. And we're gonna find out if it is too far gone at that point or not. Uh, but like I mentioned before, I fixed this machine exactly two years ago uh, according to when the customer called me. It was so funny because he called and said, uh, remember that machine you fixed the cylinder? I said, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, it, he said it broke. Something about the pin didn't line up and something, but it snapped that end off. So that was a bummer. But either way, two years is not bad. I'll show you those photos. I didn't have anything uh, videotaped, but I did take some pictures of it. So I'll insert them as I'm going along. But too much jibber jabber now, so let's uh, get after it. I'm gonna put you on time lapse to see if we can wrestle this thing around a little bit, move it to where we can get get to fixing it. All right here we go. Okay, so that worked out all right. Yes. They got, they went back together and pretty close. You can't hardly see the crack. Now this is gonna be very challenging because it broke below that level. But once I weld a majority of it, I may take this pin out so that I can access that. I'm not quite sure yet. But here you can see my old weld lines that broke below it. Uh, sheared right off so right now what I'm gonna do is put some weld around this area so that I can at least get it to hold into position while I lower this to a easier a better spot to access you know, roll the bucket and that way I can just stand and work around it instead of being on a ladder so let's get the let's get our uh, welding leads up so let's look back here I don't want to slip off this crazy thing. I'm just gonna put my hand around there. Looks like it did all right. Looks like it's about as lined up as we're gonna get it. Okay, next step. Okay, so that's about as centered as it's gonna get. Uh, this pivoted really freely, so I don't know if that's good or bad. It didn't feel like I had any slop in it. But I put that together just so it'll hold its position for now. And so now my job is to arc gouge as deeply as I can to access the root or the core of that crack. So I will arc gouge this half and uh, start to weld it. And I arc out this half and start to weld it. This cylinder got a little burnt there, but that wasn't from arc arcing. So I don't know if I have any material, but I'll show you another little trick that works pretty good uh, to protect that. So let's get that set up. All right, so that wasn't a, a preheat. That was a manner in which to protect the chrome rod. So long as you don't touch it, it will create a shield that'll keep sparks from sticking to it. Now look up here, you just touch it a little bit, it'll wipe it right off. But don't touch it and the sparks won't stick to it. So now I'm gonna attempt to start gouging these ends here uh, all the way around 
and it's gonna take a little bit of a you know a little bit of effort so I may just high speed this and show you progress along the way Alright, so we're making some decent progress. It's a little slow. It's gonna be uh, quite drawn out because this is a lot of gouging. So I'm not gonna bore you with that. So the next clip I'll show you is once I'm, I'm done gouging, I'll probably do a little bit more high speed here for a second, just a little more, but it's just a lot of gouging that just gets kinda redundant. So, next step. Okay, so I got done with all that gouging. It's an awful lot of gouging way in there get about halfway about half the material thickness the rod thickness i had to dig down a little deeper on this ouch it's still hot uh, <laughs> i had to dig down a little deeper on this side because the piece that was stuck on this rod pointed down in a v so i had to get underneath that to get to the base of the crack actually and so this is a very tight, narrow opening. Let me grab this rod here. These are quarter inch carbon rods. So it was real snug in there. Uh, it was a challenge to arc gouge without arcing on the walls, this one and that one, but it worked out. So now uh, I'm gonna use flux core, a Fab Shield 21B. That's what I use on this section here and put a weld in there. Now for those that say, what's well, gonna warp? Because you're only welding on the one side. Yes, that is correct. It will pull and make this just slightly smaller. And it may actually break these welds that I welded uh, to begin with to kind of hold it in place. It may pull it apart, it may spread it open and crack it, which is fine. Because this is not gonna warp enough to where it's going to throw the center of this pin off so much that it'll break again. You know, if it warps, it'll warp a little bit and the crack will open up maybe a 30 seconds or less. And that doesn't add to too much uh, out of center this way. You know, and besides, everything else is all sloppy as well. So we'll be fine. So next step is to fill that up as much as I can all the way around. Uh, oh, sorry, on this half at least. And then once I get good and comfortable with it, we'll reposition the machine to where I can access this side and do the same thing. And most likely towards the end, what I'll do is, you know, leave it a little bit shy of flush. And then that way I can run a, a weld around the perimeter. Uh, is this the proper way of doing it? Who knows? But if it works, it works. And this works done it before and it turns out the customer showed up and ended up telling me that this pin slid out enough that that ear over there didn't catch it uh, the bucket ear I don't know how the operator didn't see it it's a direct shot either way it slid out enough to where it just snapped that guy because these these pivot and they snapped it right up and so I don't know sometimes I don't understand but either way that's next let's uh, wi let's wire weld that Okay, so uh, it doesn't look as pretty right now and not that it'll look any prettier, <laughs> but uh, it's getting there. So <clears throat> things are looking good. It did pull 
because it, it decided it cracked. Where's that? Right there. It cracked and it opened about maybe 332nd, which is quite a bit. But if you kind of look at it this way, from the center, where's that? It's pretty still lined up center with the with the pin. You won't notice it. The only person that would notice it is Curtis. <laughs> because you'll put it on a lathe for a machinist, right? Because they'll know it's not centered. <clears throat> However, it will work. And so now we're gonna reposition this so that we can uh, start gouging on the other side. And I left this this way. I'm gonna clean all this up with a grinder, make it a little bit prettier so that my finish passes will be continuous all the way around. And things are looking good. So let's get that moved over. We're gonna grab something neat right quick and start on it. Okay, so in efforts not to bore you guys to death, I went ahead and got most of this all uh, gouged out. And I did well on this side here, like that. And I had to eat into the parent metal, my original weld, just a little bit so that I ensured I got to the base of the crack. Uh, so, <laughs> it's about as clean as I can get it. And it's unfortunate that this bucket is so big because um, I think the last time it had a smaller bucket and so it was easier to get these in a position that were out of the way. So that's been kind of a, a challenge right now. <clears throat> so right now I'm going to try and attempt. I know I said flux core earlier, but the flux core gun is too big to fit in there. So I'm going to use some eighth inch rods to try and fill that in first uh, for quite a few passes until I can fit the wire machine in there uh, I was trying to keep this as narrow as possible and right now that's about three quarter inch wide and so I still a lot of filling to do so um, hopefully the tension that pulls that way won't crack this side but usually it does all right so we'll have to keep an eye on that as we go but it normally does pretty good this thing is crazy hot so hopefully it'll it'll flex without breaking I couldn't or I could have, I guess, done it <clears throat> to where I beveled it all the way around, but it would have been a real challenge to get this straight and to get it done evenly. So this was the route I chose to go. All right, let's keep trucking. All right, well, it looks like we got it done. That was a lot of welding. It's not the prettiest. No, just a little bit of that soot. But see, that soot kept all the sparks off of it. Worked out great. So, again, it's, uh, it's not exactly centered, you know, because it's, it's very difficult to get re-centered. But it's, it's centered enough to work. <clears throat> just as long as you don't take it to a machinist. <laughs> They'll see it's off. But anyway, we're going to run it through its paces here for a second and see if it runs. And uh, see if it goes through its functions without breaking. <laughs> Let me set you guys down here for a second.
<laughs> they're old. Alrighty guys, well, looks like that'll do it. It works, which is good. And it'll hold. So as long as it holds, good enough for me. So hopefully this will last another two years. But uh, who's to say? I will tell you though that it was much, diff much more difficult two years later, like now, than it was two years ago. <laughs> uh, I'm a little older. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. And I uh, hope you guys have learned something from it. And again, I, I'm glad this, this other part is holding up well. I'll see if I can put that in the next video for you guys or, you know, the, the one after this one. So, alrighty, I need to wrap up my junk. That way we can get out of here. It's a long day. Thanks for watching, man. See you guys.